Um, okay, so uh, you have a distance matrix. Uh, you have a distance matrix, um, and that's the distance between x i. Uh, <coughs> x i and x j, right? So the way that you're gonna, uh, the way, the way that the algorithm will work is you will have n iterations because at each iteration you're gonna merge two clusters together, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a pair of clusters that are the closest, so i and j that have the minimum distance, take the clusters, merge them together, so uh, I create a cluster i and j, uh, I add it to my collection of clusters, I delete the individual clusters i and clusters j. So uh, basically, in this, in this little example, these are my three clusters, i, j, and k. <clears throat> uh, i and j are closest, so I'm gonna merge them together, uh, and I'm gonna get rid of the individual uh, individual clusters i and j. Now I have just a single cluster i plus j. Um, and then the clever part of the algorithm comes in the next step. For each remaining cluster, for each cluster k, which is not uh, one of the two that I merged now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the distance. I'm going to update the distance from cluster k to the new cluster that I've created. So I'm going to throw away the distance from k to i, the distance from k to j, and I'm going to create a new distance between k and the new cluster um, i plus j. Right? And the way that I'm going to do that for single link is really simple. right? For single link, I'm going to take the minimum of the distance from k to i and the distance from k to j. Why? That's because it kind of makes sense. So uh, the, fact that the, the fact that dk these are mixed up. This should be dkj and this should be dki. So the, uh, if this is smaller than that, this means that there is an element in j that is closer to some element in k than the closest element of i is to some element in k. So I can just take the minimum of the two intercluster inter distances, and that will be my new distance from k to i plus j. Right, so that's the... <clears throat> And that's the minimum right there. Okay, so uh, that happens for uh, that. That's what you do for single link. Now, uh, so basically, yeah, you remove that distance, and this dkj becomes my new distance between k and um, i plus j. Now, the neat thing about the algorithm is you can make a very small change. You're not changing the code. You're changing the update for the distance. Um, to the following quantity. And with that, you can implement any of the algorithms that we had on the previous slide. So you can do the single link, you can do the complete link, you can do the average link, and you can do a bunch of others. Right. Now let's look at that. So before we had the minimum of the distance from k to i and the distance from k to j. So we just pick the closest one. So what are we doing now? We're taking the distance from k to i, distance from k to j, distance from i to j, so the distance between those two guys, uh, and, uh, well, that's actually a bug. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fix that. Um, I'm going to fix that slide. <clears throat> and uh, you're, putting, uh, you're putting some weights on these distances, right? And the weights are actually given by a bunch of constants. So you can just take these constants, plug them into the equation, uh, and, uh, and get the different clustering algorithms in that way. Right? So now this, uh, this might look totally, totally confusing. So let's look at how this works out for the single link approach. Right? So for single link, what we want is we want uh, the distance between k and the new cluster i plus j. So um, that guy should be j. Um, so, um, what the constants say is the way you should combine them. You see all the constants are one half, so I'm going to have one half. And then what am I combining? I'm combining uh, alpha i, so the distance between k and i, the distance between k and j, and then I don't have this term, but I have the absolute value of the differences between k and i and k and j. Right. So why does that compute? Why does that compute the right thing? We're claiming that that's the same thing as that minimum, right? So this sum is the same thing as the minimum of k i 
and kj, which is what you want intuitively for single link. So why is that the same thing? Well, and the reason that is the same thing is, look at these numbers, dki and dkj. Those were our two arrows. Out of them, one is smaller and one is bigger. You just don't know which one without the min, right? So, uh, so one of them is the minimum. The other one is the maximum of the two. And what is this? This is the difference between the minimum and the maximum. Right? So what if you take the maximum and subtract from it the difference between the minimum and the maximum? What do you get? You get the minimum. right? So it's, it's just that. If you have two numbers, if I take the max of a and b and subtract from it the difference between a and b, I'm going to get the minimum. Right? Okay? So that's what I'm doing here. One of these is the maximum. Let's say that kj is the, is the bigger one. Right? I'm taking dkj, I'm subtracting the difference between dkj and dki, so I'm going to end up with a smaller one. The smaller one is dki. Now I have dka plus dki, so I have twice the minimum, so I just take the half of it. Okay? Easy. Uh, you can make the same argument for uh, complete link. Right? So for complete link, the only difference is instead of minus sign, I have a plus, so this is going to be a plus. Right? I have a minimum plus a maximum plus the difference between the minimum and the maximum. Right? If I take the minimum, add the difference, I get the maximum, so I'll have twice the max divided by 2, I get just the max. Okay? So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool way, uh, it's a pretty cool way to, uh, to implement all kinds of aggregation functions. So single link, complete link, average link, these are aggregation functions. This is how you take individual distances and aggregate them into one. And it turns out that with this method, you can aggregate, a, you, you can model a bunch of different aggregation functions just by sticking different uh, constants as parameters into your linear combination. So it's kind of impressive. Uh, and uh, it's also really, really practical. Because if you do this, then uh, you should really convince, it, sh it should be obvious to you that the cost is, uh, of the entire algorithm is cubic, right? I'm going to have n iterations at the top, merging two clusters at each step. Then um, I'm going to find the smallest, the, the clusters with the smallest distance. That's going to take me n squared steps, right? And then for each remaining cluster, n steps, I'm going to have a constant time update. And that's really cool. So, uh, so this, uh, if you tried to implement it directly, usually naive implementations of hierarchical clustering, they end up having horrendous complexity. So um, I, had a, um, I had a student last summer who implemented um, hierarchical clustering without Lance Williams, and the, the runtime was just horrendous. So, um, uh, so, so, so it's a really practical way to do it, and, and, and you get lots of clustering algorithms effectively um, for free.